And I think fear uh, is fear and, and inability to, to explain uh, problems in society. I, I think we live in a very unsettled time right now in terms of rapid change, uh, increasing diversity, uh, globalized economy that is, is causing all kinds of economic uh, uncertainties. Uh, and I think we are uh, particularly vulnerable uh, to some of this right at this juncture uh, because of, of, of how rapidly things are changing. And, uh, you know, I think, so it, some of it is context, right? Uh, what are we going through? And COVID obviously is, is got everybody climbing the walls. So it shouldn't be surprising that, that there would be conspiracy theories uh, arising during this period. But, uh, but there are other, you know, more structural kinds of things that we're undergoing that, that are also, I think, at the root of some of this. Um, but then, you know, at the individual level, and, and Dane's well familiar with this language, they have their, the psychologists tell us about cognitive consonants and cognitive dissonance. And all that really means is we believe something, we get input that doesn't correspond to what we believe. That creates cognitive dissonance. Uh, we can either change what we believed or we can change what we saw to conform to what we believed before. And I think a lot of the conspiracy theory business is, is a form of cognitive consonance. We don't really want to believe that's happening. We don't really want to believe we're at fault. So we're going to change reality and, and come up with an uh, explanation that makes us less uncomfortable. And so I think all of that uh, underlays, you know, where some of these really, I guess what, what a lot of us would call somewhat wild conspiracies uh, where they come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think that's all of that is right. And I'll add that um, conspiracy theories actually spread because they're useful, okay? And here, here's what I mean by that. They, they help people provide an explanation to something that is actually in reality extremely complicated with a very simple answer. Right. And so on the one hand, it, it gives people a sense that they really understand what's going on. Number one. The other way that conspiracy theories are kind of attractive is that it feels good not just to have an answer, but it feels good to be someone who has the answer. Right. And to explain to everyone else, listen, you know, there's all these all these all these political science professors with their PhDs and you know, they think they know everything about politics, but let me tell you, I watch a lot of YouTube and I actually know things that these people spent years trying to learn about and I'm the one who actually has the answer to that. And then three, um, the, 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 other, the only other thing that's more fun than sort of having an answer and then being someone who, who is smarter than other people would then be number three, to be, in a, be with a small group of other people who also think the same way you do. So there's something real attractive about conspiratorial thinking. And when you think about you know, where some of this may come from or why it has any legs at all, I mean, we know, for example, that uh, traffic, human trafficking is real, right? We know that goes on. And, and it's abhorrent and, and, and broadly creates disgust, right? So who could be behind it? Well, now we're gonna decide who do we consider immoral in society? Well, the Clintons and Hollywood celebrities and all these people that are ruining our culture. Well, there must be a connection, right? They, and, and rather quickly, you can, uh, you can convince people that these immoral people must be behind this probably behind some of these other things. And next thing you know, uh, you've got a whole phenomenon going on 